Hey everyone, I just wanted to make a quick update video just a few days after the MPC Manager has been released. First of all, I want to personally thank everybody that bought the asset. Um, it's been really good for the past few days. I am getting a ton of feedback and I already have five people that actually uh, left a review. So thank you so much. Um, I really do appreciate it. It really does help uh, get things going, especially at the beginning when a, uh, an asset is first launched. Um, it's always good to have other people kind of look at the comments and see what you really think. So um, thank you to all of you guys that um, left a, a rating and a review. If, uh, if you bought it, uh, and you, you've had time to play with it, I would again ask you if you could please take a minute and leave your honest review. It really, really does help and it helps me keep uh, developing uh, the pack even further. Um, also, it's just only been three days and I've gotten a ton of good feedback. One of the community members uh, over Discord was asking a lot more questions about how to add your own custom logic. That ended up uh, transforming into the the tutorial that I did in a brand new level that you guys are going to get in the 1.1 update. Uh, that's the one where, you, where the NPC goes in and opens the secret door and you go in and get your little coin. It's just a much better example of how to add your own custom logic. Uh, so that is there already. I've also had at least uh, four people uh, message me over Discord specifically asking about level streaming. And that is how do we set up the MPC manager to work with level streaming? That's a great question. Um, so what I did is I created a little sample level that you guys are gonna see here, um, just to basically show the best practices and also for me to actually use it in that setup and see if there's anything else that I can add to make this a much better experience. So that's what I wanted to show you guys today. Um, there's actually a couple of things that I ended up adding as a result of building this level. And again, all of this is coming in 1.1 uh, in a couple of weeks. So the first thing is, uh, there is an NPC spawner and this, uh, this is very similar to what you would find in the point of interest. You simply spawn a number of NPCs. You have an NPC list and you can either spawn the NPCs either on begin play or when you, uh, overlap a trigger. And what I've done here is that I've divided this level, you can see the dividers here, into three separate zones. Each one is going to be a completely separate uh, stream level. And you'll see that when I hit play. So we have level one here, level two, and level three at the, at the, at the far uh, end there. Um, and I have here, if you look on the scene, everything that uh, where you should be, what you should have on your persistent level, right here at the top. And even when you open it here, you can see that we have things under level one, level two, and level three. There should be things that are persistent. And then for your sub levels, what parts should be specifically on the sub levels? And I, and I divided there. I also created a very simple uh, stream level blueprint, which is going to come with, with, the, with the new update. That just helps you stream levels in and out. Um, again, it's, it's very simple, but if you've never done it, you might as well just use this as well. So the first thing I, I actually did, um, and let me just click here again, is, uh, nope, not this one. I, I've added the option to despawn NPCs on the NPC spawner. I actually didn't have that option before. You either spawn the NPCs on begin play or when you use the trigger, but I didn't have an option to despawn the NPCs. And that's important because if you want to keep this as performant as possible, when you walk out to the section here, leaving the, the, the stream level, you want not only to unload the level, but you want to despawn all of the NPCs that have spawned. So that option is there and that resulted specifically from this setup. Let me show you guys what that looks like. So if I'm here, see that nothing's loaded. And as soon as I walk here, you can see that the level geometry has been loaded. And now we have this NPC spawning. I have two spawners and they're staggered spawning again to keep performance. You don't want all of these NPCs to spawn at the same time. You'll see like a big spike um, in frame rate. So um, you see that, that we're staggering all these NPCs and I'm just giving them a little bit more time to kind of walk around. 
and then as soon as I walk out, now you'll see that not only is the, the level unloaded, but the NPCs themselves are now despawned. So that's a very nice um, addition. And you'll see now that when I turned around, you can see that now these NPCs have been spawned in their uh, POIs and the level geometry like this little street and these makeshift homes are now there. Uh, but notice something else. If I jump out and I unload the level, you can actually see the props still. And that's because the blueprints should be set in the persistent level. The blueprints themselves really don't take a lot of memory or performance. It's really the level geometry and all the other complexities that you would have in your level. Uh, so I, so the best practices here would be to keep this in the persistent level, but then you have this potential problem. Now, probably in your game, the cutoff is not going to be this drastic, so you may still not have a problem with this. But I wanted to fix that as well, because again, what if you have props uh, or stations that have props, you may still see that in the distance when you shouldn't really see it. Um, so I added, I added another option and I'm going to select the two showcase points of, of interest here and you can see it right here. This is new hide station props. And if you tick here and I click play, now you see that they're actually hidden. So basically the point of interest itself go, if you take that option, goes through all of the stations that are registered to itself and just hides the mesh. And then when you load the level. Uh, and you and you uh, go into the trigger, the same trigger that spawns the NPCs will automatically make the um, the props visible, and that makes it a much smoother transition. So you can see here that everything looks okay, and as soon as I jump out, now you can see that the NPCs are despawned, but also the props are hidden. So those two key things just came from the setup and now it works a lot better. Um, and let's just go to the third level. This is actually my favorite, um, my favorite stream level. You can see that there's a lot going on, including the, the spline crowds and the static crowds. Uh, and they seem to be having a little race. Um, and you can see there's a lot more NPCs here. So if I go in and join in, you can see that they have the random speeds. Um, so you can see that each each racer has a different speed and you can see how you can quickly create like a little scene here We have all these people cheering and watching the racers. I'm gonna speed up here I'm super fast um, And you can see here as we get to the finish line. We have some extra people kind of cheering on There you go. I don't know why I, I uh, Really like the way this this little scene came about but as you can see as soon as you leave the NPCs are despawned, and um, and when you go back in, notice that the um, the NPCs are exactly where you left them, um, as opposed to being respawned again and again and again, again. And that's an optimization thing. So so you'll see this setup uh, once you get 1.1, .1, uh, you can just open this level and play around with the different settings, see where each blueprint is, whether it's in the static level. And, and it includes the entire setup, very similar to what I have for the animal behavior kit. Uh, so hopefully this should help you guys better understand what I would consider a kind of a best use case if you're using stream levels. This is the same case if you're using world composition, uh, but this is also coming in 1.1. So you got uh, two new maps uh, going to further details uh, for the things uh, that the NPC manager can do. And out of this map came two features that actually make this an even better path. So I always say this, but I'm going to say it again. I do take your suggestions very seriously and I've been getting a ton. I've been writing a lot of ideas on my little Trello uh, board uh, for things that could potentially make it into a future update. I still have a few more things that I want to do for 1.1 as far as features. And I'm going to show that later, but I'm also giving it time to get uh, some feedback from you guys. And maybe if you find a bug, uh, please do let me know. Uh, again, it's a very complex system, so I don't doubt that I probably missed something. I really tested uh, as much as I could, but again, there's always gonna be things like that. So I'm thinking right now that I wanna give 1.1 maybe one, maybe two more weeks before I release it and see how much more feedback I get. 
Uh, and based on that, then you guys are going to get all of the improvements and, and bug fixes that come along with that. So again, thank you so much for all your support. Remember, if you're still on the fence and if you want to, um, to get it at some point, the 25% off discount will be extended until Monday evening. So you have a few more days. Uh, if you have any questions, please join my Discord. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Ask me anything you want before you buy. I want to make sure that you are happy. If you decide to buy this, I want to make sure that this is the right fit for your project and that you're going to be very, very happy with it. Um, and yeah, what do you guys think? I really like the way this little uh, level um, ended up being. So hopefully this is helpful for all of you guys that are using level streaming. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below and I will talk to you in the next video.